Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So today we're going to review trade show best practices. So the first thing that everyone needs to do after the trade show is obviously you usually come back with a stack of business cards um, and you don't really know what to do with them or how to go ahead and organize them. So the first thing I wanna make sure that everyone does is that everyone knows how to add a contact into their contacts tab. No buyer can actually access new order without their buyer name and buyer email embedded in the system. Now, if you're an integrated brand, you will need to talk to your IT team or your customer service team to create the company. But if you're not an integrated team, <clears throat> then I want you to go ahead, come into your contacts tab, click on new company. The only required fields are those that are in blue. So go ahead, type in a retailer name, fill in your billing and shipping, et cetera, and then go ahead and hit save changes. Um, once you're done adding in that company contact information, what you can do is you can go into the buyer tab and then you can add a new buyer. At this point, you'll pull a company down from the drop down. So let's say in this instance, it was Allie's Apparel. And then you can go ahead and add the buyer's name. So Allie, Allie, um, let's do Sherman. And then we can do Allie at Allie's Apparel.net. Um, we can then also assign a sales rep. So in this instance, we'll go ahead and choose Molly, and then we can go ahead and hit save changes. Now, once we hit save changes, that is what creates the invitation for your buyer to go ahead and shop on new order. So the buyer, if they are a buyer that's already registered on new order, they'll simply get an invitation that says, hey, your bot, you just got invited to shop brand X on new order. And if they've they're joining New Order for the very first time. They will get two emails, one that's inviting them to shop your particular collection and one with their username and password. But it's not until you get all those contacts into New Order that you can then begin doing that trade show follow-up, which is why I wanted to start there. Now, for trade show follow-up, the, there's, um, there's two pieces that you can do. The first thing I recommend is that for every single account that showed up at your booth but did not take any notes, did not tell you, hey, I like this or that, go ahead and send them a full line sheet. So right now, I'm in my line sheet tab, and I've clicked into the line sheet that I wanna send. In this instance, I wanna send the full collection. Now I'm going to click the mail icon. Hopefully this, um, this is something that you are already familiar with. Clicking this mail icon is what allows you to send out both the easy order, the Excel order form, um, and a line sheet. <clears throat> Once you click on the mail icon, this drawer on the right will appear, at which point the line sheet title will appear in the title box. Of course, you can always override this and say, great seeing you at the show. Um, you can option to send this to multiple email addresses. So for example, if you did get in all your contacts of the, of the buyers that didn't take notes, but did stop by, you did grab their business card and you wanted to send out this line sheet to all of them, absolutely you can send them to multiple email addresses. Um, you can send it as an easy order. Do I recommend that you do this? Yes, always leave send as an easy order toggle to on because it gives that buyer that opportunity to have a virtual online order form. You can then choose a company. So again, in this instance, we're gonna choose Allie's Apparel because that's the company we added a buyer to. We can set a ship start and a ship end date for this order. So the and obviously this will pre-populate from what you've loaded in the system. And then we can set an expiration date. Now I do recommend pushing out this expiration date to your order closing date. Um, if you, by doing this, you're going to make that easy order accessible for an extended period of time. Um, you can also use this expiration date. So for, for example, perhaps you're just trying to close out your spring 16 orders. You can say something like, hey, 10% off for all orders that are received before this expiration date. So definitely use incentives to kind of drive sales. Send a copy to yourself. You can, it's not necessary though, as we do save a copy of everything that you send out to your buyers. Include in Excel, sure, why not? This is an Excel order form that has images. You can CC any buyer's assistance. You can rewrite the email subject. So you can say, you know, what we talked about, 10% off, for all orders submitted before uh, 10.15. Um, you can 
uh, rewrite this email message, of course, it will populate for you with your own signature. And you can even include um, product requests, like perhaps you can say bestseller here, um, or as seen in Vogue magazine. And then you have that opportunity to just go ahead and hit save or send. In this instance, I'm just going to hit send. As I told you, we do save a copy underneath the um, underneath the company's um, contact information. You'll see a history of every uh, line sheet or order sent. So congrats, congratulations, your easy order has been sent. So again, to review, I'm in the line sheet tab. And what I just did was that I sent out a complete line sheet to a buyer who had shown up at my booth but didn't take specific notes. Um, now, another line sheet that I went and set up um, for today's training was my top 20 bestsellers line sheet. Now, the reason why I set up a top 20 bestsellers line sheet is that I used reporting, which we're going to get into a little bit later on, um, to run my top 20 bestsellers report for the spring 2016 season, because that's the season I'm in. So instead of sending a full collection, which may include styles that may be dropped, you also have that opportunity to then send a top 20 bestsellers line sheet to those buyers that didn't um, take particular notes, because then at least you're saying, hey, these were, I know you came and saw us at the show. Thanks so much for that. Here's a summary of our top 20 bestsellers. Um, would love to have you place an order. And I know that these are going to be, these are going to probably uh, these are what people are buying. These are what people are gravitating towards. You know that if you, um, anything to, to increase the buyer sell through is what's going to create an, a repeat customer. So that opportunity to maybe just create a top 20 bestsellers line sheet and send just that out is also a really great idea. Now, option two um, is creating that recommendation. So now you, the second kind of buyer that you worked with is that buyer that showed up at your booth and really liked a few items. So how do you note what the, that buyer liked? So now you're doing your follow-up. So maybe it's that your buyer circled items on a line sheet and you took a line sheet and circled those items as well. Um, what I'd love for you long-term to move away from is circling those items on a second set of line sheets. Really what you should be doing is get on your iPad and start clicking that thumbprint icon, which you see here. So you can basically, on all the items the buyer circled while you were working with them in the booth, you could have technically checkmarked all of these items and then sent out this custom recommendation right then and there from the booth to your buyer. Um, <clears throat> so I think long term, I'd love for you to work in this direction. But short term, if you did, if you did end up with a stack of line sheets where you've circled a bunch of pictures, and now you want to make sure that you get you follow up with your buyer and send them just a custom line sheet, right? You're making them a recommendation, which is a custom line sheet of just those items you have the opportunity to do so. So right now I've gone ahead and again, I've check, um, checkmarked or thumb, thumbs up to a few of these items and I'm going to go into my recommended tab. Now in my recommended tab, um, I can go ahead and merchandise items as I see fit. So perhaps, you know, I want to put these items like this, like how do I want this line sheet to be sent out to my customers and perhaps I want everything printed up at the top. And then, just like we did before, we have that option to click the mail icon because again, I'm sending out a line sheet. So I'm clicking that mail icon, which is one of the important symbols in the order. And now I'm going to title this again. So great seeing you at the show. Here are your picks. Now, again, I have the option to send to multiple email addresses, but this is one buyer special picks. I have the option to send as an easy order. Am I going to do that? Absolutely. I'm going to pull in Allie's apparel once again. Uh, I'm going to set the ship and start date, which will pre-populate for me. And I'm going to set this expiration date to, again, that October 15th, which is my closing date. I'm going to leave send to self toggled on in this instance. And I'm going to leave send in, as an Excel order form, just in case this buyer prefers to work with Excel order forms. And then in this instance, I probably would customize the email message like, hi, Allie. Um, here is a summary of the notes you took because chances are Allie could have left that line sheet in her hotel room. She could be sitting on a stack of 40 line sheets that she's then going to have to sort through. Obviously sending her just a curated line sheet of the items that she wanted exclusively is going to be game changing for her. Um, next, I'm going to choose the line sheet. So right now 
Um, I don't have that many products um, in my line sheet. I've got about 10 or 15, but I really want Allie to see these pictures big and beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my five products landscape with a color card. Um, our brand is a brand that does use color swatches, so it's important to supply them with a color card. So I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and send. Perfect, now Allie's going to get her custom recommendation. Um, once you're done working with um, setting up your recommendations, you wanna make sure that you're removing all products. Um, and that's going to be so that you can then work on your next recommendation. Um, the next uh, area I wanna call out is the orders tab. Now at the show, you probably sent out a ton of easy orders, draft orders, and you probably even submitted quite a few orders that you're reviewing. So right now in our easy order folder, you'll see that it's pretty full. Um, so items that you can, you can do here, um, you'll see that um, you have that opportunity to view any easy orders. So perhaps you wanna go ahead and view the easy order that you sent out and follow up with your buyer and say, hey, I'm gonna copy and paste this link here into the body of an email and say, I sent you an easy order and you know what? I haven't heard back from you. So here's a link to that easy order just in case you didn't get it. And maybe I can give you a call and we can walk through you submitting that order. And this gives you and the buyer the opportunity to revisit the easy order and to perhaps resubmit it. So I do want to suggest that once you're done um, with the season, make sure that you're cleaning up your easy order, deleting old ones. So again, I clicked on that, um, that drawer icon and deleted these easy orders. The same thing with your draft folder. Anything that's a draft that you did, you, you did create um, that perhaps is no longer valuable, you want to make sure that you are deleting those drafts as well. Um, for teams that, are, are, um, that do have global drafts turned on, which I'm a team right now that has global drafts turned on, I can tell because these drafts are shared. It basically means that I have visibility on all drafts that are created by my entire team. Um, let us know if you want that turned on for your team or if you want that feature turned on. Um, so just to call this out, you can only delete the drafts that you created. So I can delete this one, but I will not be able to delete any of Allie's drafts that are shared. Okay, um, the next thing in that in review folder, be sure that you're checking here. Now we submit to you an email every time your buyer submits um, an order, you'll get it, the rep will get an email that says, hey, your order has been submitted. Be sure to check in your in review folder if you're missing those emails to make sure that you are approving all of the orders that your buyer did in fact submit. Um, I wanna make sure that all these orders, you know, normally an in review folder shouldn't have any order sitting in review because all of them have been approved. Um, so definitely make sure that you're walking in there and you're checking that. Um, pending of course is where any orders that you did submit at the show are living currently. Um, if you're a team that requires the reps to approve their orders, again, make sure that your reps are approving your orders. But in short, all of your orders tabs should be maintained and cleaned, and this is how you're going to manage your follow-up. Truly, you're gonna manage the majority of your follow-up though with the easy orders and the draft folder. Okay, great. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about are two of the key reports. Um, two of the key reports that um, we expect you to utilize when you are doing your trade show follow-up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click into reporting. Now, once we click into the orders tab, you will see that we are going to have a snail snapshot at the, up at the top. But what I really want you to focus on are just a few of these really awesome one-click reports. So the first report that I want to go ahead and call out to you is anyone that's doing a production report, you can easily utilize the total bookings by style, color, and size report. So if you want, you can go ahead and drill down on this report by all of your different order statuses. Now, why is this so game changing? There's absolutely no ERP out there that will allow you to report both on your notes and your book dollars. So this gives you the opportunity to report on both. So if you want, if you need, if you are a sales manager or a sales director, or SVP of sales or a sourcing manager, et cetera, and you need to know, you need to place that production by before the season ends, definitely utilize this report to go ahead and run it. Um, I think it's also a really great report for sales reps to run if you kind of just want to be able to know, hey, what are the top 50 styles for the collection? So just kind of like a bigger sampling of what's really moving. Is it bottoms? Is it tops? You can drill down, of course, by category. So what are our hottest 
you know, what are our highest selling dresses, et cetera. This is going to be a report that's gonna be great for you to run if you're a rep, simply because it's going to tell you which styles will not be dropped most likely, right? And the fact that you can run this across drafts as well is also going to tell you like, God, let me push my buyers into styles that are really going to move. So maybe it's that super fashion style that you sold your buyer into that you, you're like, God, I can move this buyer's dollars into something else because I have a good feeling that that style is gonna get dropped. So definitely um, use this report, drill down on the statuses and get what you need from it. Now, the next report that I wanna talk about is that top 20 best sellers report. And again, you can go ahead and drill down on those statuses. So I would go ahead and select you know, out of everything. And then I would go ahead and drill down on season. So in this instance, we've been talking about spring. So I wanna know what my top 20 best sellers are for spring. Um, and then you can even choose a date range if you need, but you absolutely don't have to. You can also drill down by units sold, total value or number of orders. In this instance, I'm gonna drill down by units sold. And then what you can do is you can export it at which point it will export into an Excel. So you'll basically get this beautiful Excel doc with images embedded into it that show you your top 20, or you can just quickly preview. So that line sheet that I showed you in the line sheet tab, the thing that's so great about that is that it shows you, it's, it's already set up for you, so it's already showing your top 20 for the spring season. And then again, you can always toggle, you can always generate this report and then toggle over the images to see what your top 20s are. Okay, cool beans. So now we're gonna go further down and the last report that I want to call out in this webinar is this who didn't buy the top 20 best sellers. So basically we're wrapping up the season. Um, you want to make sure that you absolutely did not miss a single one of your customers. So we're going to go ahead and drill down again by spring here. Oh, excuse me. We're going to go. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and drill down by spring because I'm going to ask myself the question, who didn't buy my top 20 best sellers for spring? Chances are if they didn't buy your top 20 best sellers, they missed market completely okay so then what you can do is you can generate this report it will preview it's basically an excel doc it's going to list your top 20 best sellers down on the left hand side and it's going to list all of your brands or your buyers across the top so it looks exactly like this and it's basically going to show you hey this store swans didn't buy any of your top 20 best sellers for spring basically what that's telling you is hey they probably missed market completely so if you export this report as an Excel, the upside is, is that every single day you can work through, you know, 20 or 30 of these accounts that maybe they missed, right? Um, and, and then give yourself a little bit of homework. I think this is a great report also for sales managers, SVP of sales, et cetera, to work through with their team, um, because of course they have the ability to report on the entire team. Um, and ask your team like, hey, did this account just you know, place an awful buy and totally miss the mark because then they're not going to have great sell through or, hey, did this account um, not buy at all? And what are you, you know, what are you doing to make sure that they, we don't miss them this season? Um, and I think it's honestly really great to run this report even for two seasons. So run it for spring and fall and really see like, gosh, who did we miss, you know, and, and make sure that we get them back in there. So that pretty much summarizes today's webinar. I would love to know if we've got any additional questions.